Hello there, Commonwealth from you. Are these islands low gravity as they are the highest in the game? Apparently not, as both the launch point down to the wind temple and the Zonai Relief Island 3000 points above the sea are not low gravity. So why does Link moon jump, moon glide and moonwalk on a few islands and not others? Well, that is the mystery, isn't it? So be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press notification bell and let's explore the origin and importance of, in my opinion, the best part of the sky of the Great Sky Island. The tease in the final Tears of the Kingdom trailer was more than just the ascent up to the Water Temple with then still Prince Sidon. Though not much more, since low gravity is limited to three Lame sky castles, a few smaller islands, but with footage help from Troll Squad 57, we can present you these territories from new perspectives. These unique islands are one of our most important connections to the Zonai before the founding of the Kingdom of Hyrule or Hyrule Kingdom. And our first indication is Lightcast Island, one of the hardest sky islands to reach in the entire game. But for a very good reason, since this location does not only hide a solid sky cave shrine quest puzzle, but also the Zonite Hell. Right here we find our direct tie to the Zonai, since there are a bit of misconceptions going on about the sky islands. Namely, which ones were still a part of the surface after the imprisoning war. In some cases, it is hard to tell. But we do know even from cutscenes that it must have been a substantial amount. Since both the later wind and water temples, along with the surrounding sky islands, can be seen in the distant past cutscenes starring the Sages of Wind and Water with Princess Zelda. And when you look at that, the Zora Sage cutscene features the blue and brown particles that are characteristic of the low gravity zones and islands. Either way, it is pretty clear that Lightcast Island was floating with its low gravity when King Raru grabbed Demon King Ganondorf in the depths, an island that is unique in its own right due to its significance, both when it comes to the game's key mechanics, but also Zonai lore. Our Claire's tied to the Dragon Tribe's legacy or dominance through Zonite, used for every vehicle and device they built, and which King Raru eventually offered to his Hylian successors in the fight against Demon King Ganondorf's servants. Still, the ultimate armor made of the precious resource remain in the barriered sky. Two of them in the regular gravity sky, but the crown of the set was hidden deep within Lightcast Island, one of the most influential low gravity islands. At the same time, this key sky location also offers one of King Raru's shrines, meaning that he ventured here at some point after becoming king. The same goes for the other sky shrines, which unlike the 120 surface shrines, show no connection to the 120 light roots in the depths. Now, what do many of these sky shrines have in common? Zonai item dispensers, and within a few of these we find the hover stones, gravity defining green blocks, of Zonite that will float as long as they are activated and we still have energy cells left to power them or Zonite charges, including the large ones, to recharge them. Not only that, they were introduced in the same scene as low gravity in the final trail. Through these, in one of the entries of Wordsworth questline and the ranger construct on Great Sky Island's Temple of Time roof, we find the closest answer to the origin of the Sky Islands. It all ties to the Zonai's ability to use Zonite in order to cause objects, then structures, and eventually land to elevate and then float in the sky. A tradition that was finally used by the sages to create the last sky islands and place them in the layer of the light dragon. This is how Great Sky Island came to be and will link with awake. But what about the low gravity islands? Truth to be told, they are an anomaly and have nothing to do with how high they are located as there are places in the sky that are higher but with the same gravity as on the surface and in the depths. However, we have more clues pointing to their origin, namely the Lome Sky Castles or Labyrinths. In the past, these massive structures were theorized to be built by a different people than the Zona, but now it is pretty clear that the Lome are nothing more than a different name for the same race. Perhaps Lome was the name of their kingdom or an earlier name for the entire race. And what is unique with these locations in the sky is that these three icons or labyrinths are isolated from the two low gravity zones found respectively in the western and eastern sections of the sky layer. Naturally, the gameplay aspect 
and possibilities it offered for the Zelda team in Kyoto was definitely instrumental. At the same time, we do sense that within the low gravity, the developers also saw and planted a deeper lore aspect. One that tied Link, and for him us the player, to the former distant past rulers before the Highlands. The Zonai before Raru that we only face through ruins, but never through cutscenes. The grand civilization that laid out everything and assisted both the Rito and the Zora to build sky powerhouses above their domains. The Zora case in particular is interesting, as only low gravity allows anyone incapable to fly to reach the water temple. That includes early game Link. And what is really crucial to the puzzles in this temple? Hoverstones, directly tied to Zonite and crystallized charges, which again are used in the production of energy cells by the Ranger constructs. The source of the Zonite's former power and dominance across the three layers. Low gravity should thus be considered as ancient Zonai magic, or prowess if you prefer, perhaps the greatest accomplishment and source of pride. Bending something that keeps everything down, including at 3000 points of verticality, while not floating out of orbit. That naturally being gravity. But as previously mentioned, low gravity is identified by the entrance to the blue zone and then the presence of blue and brown particles floating in the air. All right. What do the Zonai, including Raru, and even the Sages place in these hard to reach territories? Naturally, some of the most valuable artifacts. We've already referenced the Zonite Helm, the crown to one of the most useful armor sets in Tears of the Kingdom. The importance of which, especially to lore, cannot be overstated as the other two pieces show a distinct similarity to the ancient hero's aspect. Next, we have the Sages' Will located inside Starview Island, one of few sky islands of the Great Sky Island to have an interior with its own vegetation. Plus, just like in the case of Lightcast Island, it has its own clever mirror-based light puzzle, a recurring theme in the western low gravity zone. Within this grand cluster, or archipelago, we also find the only flux construct fight within the low gravity environment. Meanwhile, the low gravity north and south Lame sky castles both hold chests with big batteries, one of the most helpful and rare Zonai items in the exploration of the sky islands. The south Lame sky castle is also the royal host to Raru's trolling blessing. <laughs> Last, but definitely not least in the east, we have the low gravity water temple and its surrounding islands. Despite being a horrible dungeon, it hosts the Zonai secret stone of water, but I'm only mentioning this all briefly, since the relic originated in the Forgotten Temple on the surface and only made its way up here with the Zora Sage of Water after the imprisoning hole. Nevertheless, as we can see from our collection of low gravity sky islands, there are no doubt some of the greatest highlights and most pleasant surprises in the game. But let's be honest, low gravity deserved a far better temple. Luckily, the Lomi Sky Castles and Labyrinth more than compensated for this one. All right, let's summarize our discoveries to solve this new to Tears of the Kingdom mystery. Low gravity is by all indications one of the distant past Zonite's greatest kept secrets and accomplishments through the likely utilization of Zonite. Islands that for certain were up in the sky long before Great Sky Island and holding some of the most important treasures and marvels of the extinct civilization. The Hoverstones being one of the key clues as to how they for one created the Sky Islands are within this layer, far more impressive premium low gravity spheres. Areas that stand out from the rest of the Sky Islands, possibly serving this, let's be honest, empire of the distant past, which the Zora were the greatest benefactors of. Naturally, I want to hear your thoughts on the low gravity mystery, as just like in the case of the Sky Islands, this might be a concept that will not carry over to the next Open Air Zelda title. But it is one that I hope will return a few games from now. After all, after Skyward Sword, we had an over decade long break from a sky layer in Zelda. At the same time, this might also be our last Tears of the Kingdom feel. Not video, don't worry, we have plenty more of those on this game, and of course the Zelda franchise planned. But we have to admit, views on Tears Furies have been disappointing, and we need higher viewership to keep them going. One way you can help is by sharing and liking this video along with subscribing and pressing that notification bell. In this regard, a great thanks goes to our patreon.com slash patrons who make these videos and theories possible. 
Special shoutouts go to royal producers Zach Johnson and JC Funk, and heroes Holly Wolf, Cheryl, and Garrett Hoyt. You rock, and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.